Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, I'll talk about primary versus backup frequencies, and how you can use these two different phases to coordinate appropriate frequency solutions in Wireless Workbench 6. Planning for frequency usage for any show that uses wireless is a big task, and taking a lot of different inputs in is probably one of the best preparation steps you can do to make sure that the coordination and the solution that you find uh, best fits the, uh, the show, the gig. Uh, so what I want to talk about today are ways that you can request frequencies in Wireless Workbench uh, in an optimal way to let the calculator find for you the best possible solution for what you need. So I want to start with an example. Let's say um, I'm, I'm an RF tech at a show, and for that show I've got 30 channels, not frequencies, 30 channels I want to use, meaning 30 physical receivers and transmitters that uh, are going to be used as a part of the show. So in order to set something up like that, you might have a configuration just like I have here. Um, I've got, in my case, 10 PSM 1000s, 10 UHFRs, 10 ULXDs. Now, there's an important thing I want to call out, though. Um, as I mentioned, these are 30 physical channels, so I'm going to need, in order baseline to operate this show, a frequency for each one of those 30 channels. Um, and when I expand these headers, you'll see I've got 10 frequency requests under this header called primary frequencies for each of these systems. Now primary frequencies, um, that's, a, that's a term that we use in wireless workbench, and I'm going to explain it in a second, but uh, basically what that means is uh, when the calculator goes to find all of these frequencies, it's the primary frequencies it's going to look for first. Uh, now let me compare that to uh, backup frequencies, which is another, what I'll use the term, I'll use the term phase to describe the difference between primary and backup frequencies. Um, backup frequencies, they work differently than primary frequencies. When the calculator in Wireless Workbench goes to find frequencies in the spectrum for each of these systems, it will start by looking for, uh, looking to fulfill all of the primary frequencies first for any given um, type of system. Let's say, no, I don't have any backup frequencies requested here. So in this scenario, all I'm asking for are 10 frequencies, primary for each of each of these systems. Now you'll notice, um, okay, I'm asking for maybe a little bit more than I can find, but this is actually part of the demo I want to show you in a second here. So Wireless Workbench doesn't have any um, ambiguity when it comes to phases. Only primary frequencies are being asked for, so those are the frequencies that it's going to be trying to fulfill. Now let's say, uh, you know, I want some insurance for this particular show, and I'm, I want to have some extra frequencies in case one of my channels takes interference, or I just am going to sleep better at night knowing there are backup frequencies. Totally reasonable thing to do, uh, and a totally valid and common use case for a lot of RF coordinators. So uh, I'll show you a really quick, convenient way that I can add backup frequencies for each of these systems. I'll expand it so you can see. If I right-click on the header here, I actually get this menu with a bunch of different options, one of which is the ability to add backup frequencies. Let me add five backup frequencies for my PSM. Bink, and there we go. And now you'll see uh, what happens is, I can actually collapse this just by double-clicking, in addition to the 10 primary frequencies for PSM 1000, a secondary phase header shows up called backup frequencies. And you'll notice it's below primary frequencies very purposefully to uh, suggest visually that these are, um, well, second-class citizens as compared to the primary frequencies, meaning the calculator will try to fulfill the primaries first before the backups. So let me show you that in action. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the UHFRs. I'll add five there. And I'll do the same thing for the ULXDs. One, two, three, four, five. OK. Now let me collapse this again so we can see um, at a high level. You'll see I've got 15 total requests uh, for each type of system, and just to confirm, five backups and 10 primaries. Now, you'll notice when I did my first coordination, I didn't find all the frequencies I was looking for. I only found seven out of the 10 primary frequencies for ULXD. What I want to illustrate for you is when I try to calculate frequencies again, uh, though there was plenty of spectrum when I was looking for these first few systems, Wireless Workbench is smart enough to know I'm only going to try to find primary frequencies for all my systems first before I even start to worry about backup frequencies. So what you'll see is uh, the calculator will stop uh, looking uh, at 10 frequencies here, 10 frequencies here. It won't go beyond 10 corresponding to the 10 primaries uh, before it fulfills all of the primary requests for all systems. Um, so let me show you that. If I press calculate now, you'll see these guys are stuck at 10. Um, all primary requests are fulfilled and the backup requests are not fulfilled because we're still trying to find primaries for this ULXD system here. And so what I wanted to, to illustrate 
uh, through this demo is that primary frequencies are a great way for you to tell the calculator these are the frequencies I need first. Make sure you find these. And then after you've exhausted your ability to try to find those, then if there is room left over, go after the backup frequencies. So I can uh, doctor this demo a bit by uh, relaxing my compatibility profiles. So now it'll be, uh, actually that's not the one I wanted to do. I want to relax these compatibility profiles. So now it'll be easier to find these 10 primaries for ULXD. And you'll see, um, Oh, well, an egg on my face didn't find all those. Let me just make them all more frequencies. Uh, and you can see here that once it's easy enough to find all 10 of these ULXDs, basically once all my primaries are found, then things can turn over and they'll go above 10 to try to find those five backups. So basically what we've broken down here is the difference between backups and primary frequencies and that when you ask for them, um, there is an inherent priority towards primary frequencies and those will be fulfilled before the calculator tries to find any backup frequencies for any systems whatsoever. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you've got questions or comments or you want to see a little bit more about uh, backup frequencies and how to use them after you've calculated them, be sure to leave comments down below. Thanks.